Hey, I'm Dave, and welcome to the Armory. Look what came in the mail. I find it super relaxing building Lego, but I also really enjoy watching an arm just do its work. Today, we're gonna use Herman, and we're gonna build this Lego art. If I ever get free time, I really like building Lego. I find it super relaxing, and I'm a big fan of Star Wars, if you can't tell. So what we're gonna have to do is 3D model and print a little passive gripper for Herman so it can pick up the individual pips and build out the entire art. We're also gonna need some kind of a storage rack for the individual pips that'll have to be sorted ahead of time because Herman doesn't have a camera or any kind of sensor to tell where the pips are and to tell what color they are. So they need to be sorted and aligned nicely ahead of time. So we're gonna do that inside a blender and 3D print it. So here's the hardware I'm working with. I 3D printed a slot for each color of pip. Unfortunately, there's 12 colors, which I didn't know about, so I'm short a few. I need to 3D print those and stick them in the end here. I also put them at an angle so that when the arm picks it up, it can always push the pip into a corner to locate it pretty accurately. On the end of the arm, I have this finger that you can attach a pip to the very end of. Because LEGO has a super tight tolerance, I should hopefully be pretty consistent in being able to pick up the individual pieces. Now I cut a slot out of the side of that pip so that when it plugs it into where it needs to go, it can tip and it's far more likely to break off of here than to pop off of this board. So hopefully that makes it so I can place them really accurately, again, without needing pneumatics or some sort of mechanical separation. And here is just a big hunk of wood mounted straight to the table. And then I have a sacrificial Lego plate that I screwed right to it so that this can just clip straight onto it. So now, software. Because it's a collaborative arm, it does have force feedback. So I should be able to move into position and start moving until it sees a certain force. And at that point, it knows that it hit the pip, and then I can pick it up. Same with placing here. Because this isn't perfectly flat, it has a little bit of a bow to it. So when I'm trying to place it, I'm actually waiting until I see the force of touching this before I release the pip.
I had a lot of fun doing this project. It combined some of my favorite things and was decently challenging too. It took Herman about nine hours to go through and pick up all the individual pips and put them on the board. To do that, force feedback was necessary. It would move in and slide over until it engaged a pip and then pick it up and put it on the board. And it would also use that force feedback to know when it engaged with the board. So not having that would have made this a real pain. Herman is a really small arm and I keep forgetting how small it is. Because of that, it makes fixturing kind of hard. There's not a whole lot of space around the robot where you can fixture. So that's why I had to split this into two individual banks and put this directly in front of it. Now with Herman being really small though, that generally means the smaller the arm, the more accurate it will be. There are of course exceptions to this rule, but having the arm be really accurate is helpful because Lego has a super tight tolerance. So as long as you can be making accurate moves, you should be okay. The software was done with a combination of PolyScope and URScript. The URScript made it so that on my computer, I could go through and type up all the individual pip colors into a single variable and then load it onto the controller. So that saved a lot of time. Also using script, I could go through and type out all of the math that made it so it could place the pips accurately on the board. Again, also without having to do it on the controller. But Polyscope was used for actually the picking and the placing. So all of the motions and the force feedback inside of there. Because Herman is a collaborative arm, again, I didn't really need to worry about safety. So that definitely helped speed things up. The hardware has changed pretty solidly though since I started. Originally, I had all these pip slots kind of on an angle so that Herman could pick out from the bottom and gravity would feed in new ones. But there was too much force pushing down. So anytime Herman would pick up a piece, there was a solid chance that more would slide out or pieces would flip over and it wasn't consistent enough. So I ended up taking those slots and splitting them into kind of two banks and um, was hoping that I could use the end of the arm and the force measurement to come in and brush all the pips to the end before I picked up the last one. And that worked okay, but the force feedback in the CB3 arms isn't accurate enough for that kind of real de detail work. So there were cases where it would basically plow through and just sort of splash pieces everywhere. So that didn't work. It was better, but still not there. So what I ended up doing was going inside and stealing a little brush from Jerry the Roomba and using that so it can brush the pips across first. And that seems to work a whole lot better. If you have any questions or comments about anything I did here, make sure to put that down in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you. I do have more videos coming too with different brands, different arms, different applications. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so that you get notified when the new videos come out. Robots are awesome and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.